FYI, this is the only car review channel with an evil twin. Oh, you flatter me. Actually, that was less of a compliment, more of a warning. Used to be when daydreaming about carving up empty roads in a sports sedan, it was the German brands that drove our imagination and passion. This automaker, uh, not so much, even though it has given us the LFA. Give the folks from Nagoya, Japan some credit. Lexus engineers have been on a quest to give its cars more emotion. The 2021 IS is the fruit of that labor. It's a heavy mid-cycle refresh that gives enthusiasts a few reasons to wake up and look around at the competition. Sports sedans may not be as popular as they once were, but that doesn't mean there aren't plenty of great choices. Alfa Romeo Giulia, Audi A4, BMW 3 Series, Cadillac CT4 and CT5, plus Genesis G70, and they all have their strengths. Uh, there's Acura TLX too, though it's a front driver unless you option it with all-wheel drive. Truth is, no one manufacturer has a lock on exceptional handling these days. What's new for 2021? Well, obviously it looks different. The Nike Swoosh DRLs are now integrated within the LED headlamps. The spindle grille is a little different. There's a big difference in the greenhouse with a new C-pillar shape. Most noticeable is the back. Katana blade tail lamps have been replaced with units that give the rump less of a droopy look, and the connecting bar widens the visual. It's not just cosmetic, there's new bracing in the front structure, additional spot welds, and significant adhesive use throughout the chassis, plus a brace that's welded to the C-pillar that it surrounds. New springs, stabilizer bar, and aluminum suspension arms drop weight. New bound stops help manage the sprung weight. Powertrains remain the same. Be aware that F-Sport is strictly an IS350 thing now. The 3,700 pound rear drive IS300 that I'm driving gets motivation from a two liter twin scroll turbocharged four cylinder with 241 horsepower and 258 pound-feet of torque that's available lower in the rev range. The IS350 model offers up 311 horses and 280 pound-feet from its 3.5-liter V6. Go with the all-wheel drive IS300 and the engine changes to a 3.5-liter V6, which is the same engine as the IS350. It's just detuned by some 51 horsepower and 44 pound-feet of torque. Also with all-wheel drive, the transmission changes to a six-speed. Rear drive ISs like this one get an eight speed. The ratios are the same whether it's the four or six cylinder. And sorry, there's no manual. Drive modes change the throttle, transmission, and steering. Gauges are largely analog, a plus for some, a minus for others. The 300 is quick, not fast. Zero to 60 happens in just under seven seconds. There's always the 350, right? It's just $4,000 more. We'll say though, the Turbo 4, nice and smooth. I like the dynamic of this engine. The emphasis on improving handling has paid off for Lexus. From what I remember of the previous setup, this is an upgrade. Engineers definitely improved the drivability of the IS. Part of that comes from new suspension arms that are forged aluminum. They're around 20% lighter now. And the dampers are more sophisticated even in the base setup here. 300s do not get the F-Sport suspension. I haven't driven that, I can't tell you the difference. This setup is on the comfortable side of sporty. The hairs on the back of my neck find Julia, G70, and CT5V more compelling. The overall driving vibe that I get from the IS300 reminds me a lot of the Cadillac CT4, the regular model, not the V. This is comfortable, it handles well, it's quiet at 80 miles an hour. It's very planted. Body movements are well controlled. The suspension setup of the 300 allows for some roll in extreme cornering, certainly nothing excessive. Besides, that's not the kind of driving that people do on the way to the grocery store. Check out the dynamics under hard braking. In 300 trim, the IS has good real world chassis tuning. It's not a hard-edged performance sedan, and not meant to be one. Is the 300 fun to drive? Yeah. Is it a track star? Uh, 
No, you need to move up to the 350 F Sport for that. And that is available with adaptive dampers. The 300 is not. Without having driven it, I'll assume the top spec IS350 F Sport doesn't offer the experience found in an Audi RS5 Sportback or BMW M3. But the Lexus Dynamic should be much more tolerable for owners on an everyday basis and much less expensive. Buy what you want, buy what you need. The transmission dynamic is the kind that you don't notice and go into manual mode and shifts are quick. They're not dual clutch quick though. Guess you're wondering, the EPA average fuel economy of the IS300 is 25 miles per gallon and that's on specified premium fuel. And normally this is where I would show you the automatic engine stop start system, but the IS doesn't have one. The standard active electronic safety tech suite dubbed Lexus Safety System Plus 2.5 includes left turn intersection support that warns the driver or brakes the car to avoid a T-bone collision if the system determines there's an oncoming vehicle while you're turning. The 2021 IS cockpit has the same ambiance as the 2020, and it does feel like a cockpit with solid looking elements in the center stack. If geometrical shapes are important to you, rectangular vents are replaced with circular ones. Materials and switch gears are solid, the kind that premium brands like Lexus should deliver, but I'm still a sucker for the C-Class cabin. IS 300 starts at 40,000 bucks. This one is optioned to the $43,600 level, a decent value and includes heated and vented chairs in the comfort package. I'll point out that IS doesn't get leather. The seat material is new Lux. The Mark Levinson system packs 1800 watts, 17 speakers, surround sound, and a CD player. A laugh if you want, they offer high quality sound. If you haven't experienced a heated wheel, you'll never go back once you do. There are some panels that look a little plain at this price point. The 350 offers up different materials. The big win in here is the user interface. It doesn't look all that different from the 2020 model and the fussy trackpad that I don't like is still here, but the screen that's raised so eyes stay on the road is now touch sensitive. It's much easier to call up menu items this way while driving and it's closer so it's not as much of a reach. Android Auto and Apple CarPlay are standard kit, but not of the wireless kind. Your seat is adjusted for a comfortable driving position, right? Yep, uh, we're both five foot nine. Yeah, just checking, sports stands don't normally have really roomy back seats, and that's the case with the IS. I've got that much headroom, knee and leg room are okay. Foot room, kind of on the tight side. The cushions are moderately high, thigh support is okay. Door openings are big enough so that you can get car seats in and out, just not super easy. There are, no door pockets and no power ports of any kind either. The drive shaft tunnel is on the hefty side. Put three people back here and their feet are gonna get crowded. You really don't want that many back here because of the raised seating position in the middle. I have no headroom whatsoever. This is a pretty Spartan space for a Lexus. Notice there are no cup holders at all, no place to put a drink. The best I can say is there are two pockets. I've kind of covered design, but I'll go a little bit further. The crew at Lexus did a nice job of making the IS more mature looking. Uh, personally, I often find Lexus vehicles to have extraneous lines without purpose, creases that don't seem to resolve. The new duds on the IS have direction that can be understood. I like the curvature where the C-pillar meets the rear quarter. Wish that front license plates weren't necessary in most states. They ruin the lines of the spindle grill. By the way, Google my name and the word grills and you'll find my New York Times story that explains why Lexus uses it. I don't know a single sports sedan that has an exceptionally roomy trunk. That's why SUVs and crossovers are so popular these days. People haul things, they go to Costco, they, they hoard toilet paper. 
Many cars in this segment use run flat tires and no spare. Thanks, Lexus. There are some tie downs, but that's about it when it comes to features. Dropping the back seats means opening up the back doors, and there's quite a lip. No ski pass or 40 20 40 split either. Lexus offers the NX and RX crossovers if 10.8 cubic feet doesn't handle your hauling needs. With seats up, five packs of the two ply will squeeze into the boot. Keep in mind that the arms aren't covered and they can do some damage to fragile cargo if you're not paying attention. Let's sum up the IS300. It's red light, green light time. Green light. The styling is more cohesive and directional now, especially the front and rear ends that are less busy. With the chassis improvements, driving dynamics are crisper and cleaner now. Lexus engineers' effort for a better experience behind the wheel shows. And it's hard to beat the brand's reliability and ownership reputation. It's constantly rated at the top of the heap. Yellow lights? Uh, thanks for the addition of a touchscreen, Lexus. Maybe ditch the trackpad for something useful like wireless phone charging. Interior materials are high quality, but plain door panels are more Toyota than Lexus. No F-Sport attitude for you, IS300. That requires another four grand for the IS350. Red light. The back seat is Spartan for a luxury division. There aren't any creature comforts. No manual transmission, if that's your thing with a sports sedan. And the Lexus promotional machine markets the IS with visuals of it running hard on a track. At the very least, the IS 300 is not that car. And you know what? It's okay to not be a fire-breathing, kidney-rattling ride. Some people don't want that. Be glad that Lexus is offering a sporty sedan. They're kind of going away. And not to be a killjoy, but how many owners rise early on Sunday mornings to shake their cars down on winding roads or head to a track? One thing to remember of all the choices that you have in sports sedans, there is electric, the Tesla Model 3. Don't forget that. IS300 will keep owners comfortable on an everyday basis, plus show them a good time during hard cloverleaf maneuvers and that curvy road on the way to the gym. And thankfully, it's not just another crossover. The only way to figure out what works best for you is to test drive. The IS is about balance and finding some joy in everyday driving. One thing I'll leave you with is the topic of performance. Personally, I like it, and I'll tolerate a stiffer suspension to get better handling. That's me, but so you know where I'm coming from when I profile a car. I take the big tent approach. I've spent my life in journalism, and I don't write to impress other auto writers. I assess vehicles for the people that might buy them. Uh, what a concept, huh? Part of me feels my brethren has overhyped performance, like it's a bad thing if you want comfort. And frankly, I've been guilty of that. I love the idea of wide open roads and unlimited speed limits as much as the next guy. But I'm also grounded in the reality that most of our miles are spent in choked traffic. <laughs> Sadly, I'm trying to give you the whole picture. I don't do clickbait, and maybe it's one of the reasons why I don't have millions of subscribers. So be it. It would be great if more people saw the work that I put into these videos, but I'd rather be honest to the audience that I have. It's kind of soul satisfying to me. Don't know if you know this, but the average price of a vehicle these days is around $40,000. That is why I set up a price quote service. Now, you got to understand that some manufacturers set pricing really high, so there's room to deal. Others don't. You don't know that until you get real world pricing. You don't have to use my service, but it's really smart to do it. And some viewers get annoyed when I say test drive at least three different vehicles, but I'm shocked at the amount of people who just go buy another Accord or another RX 400 without looking around. Don't be that person. Those who subscribe to this channel know at the end I try to give you a fun fact. This week it's not so much about the IS itself, but how the chassis dynamics were developed. In 2019, Toyota opened up the Shimiyama Technical Center in Japan, and you might have heard that Akio Toyota, guy whose family name is on the building, declared that there will be no more boring Lexus or Toyota cars. He is a very good driver. Now, part of the three point 3 mile course that has 250 feet of elevation change is apparently modeled after the Nürburgring in Germany. So that should help them develop better handling vehicles, huh? That's a win for all of us. Thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe. 
That's Driven. I'm Tom Volk.